Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one recording, only one, by Artist X, it would have to be work, blah, or recording, ugh. Well, Artist X is the great Italian pianist Arturo Benedetti Michelangeli, the one, the only, the terrifying Michelangeli. And the recording in question, and we have the total ascent of Mildred. There she is. Mildred, do you agree with me? You think so? Yeah? Yeah, Mildred agrees. And that's really important because I, I do nothing without Mildred agreeing. Uh, okay, so what do we got here? Yes, it, it is this thing. DBC, Image 1 and 2 and Children's Corner. I have to tell you a story about this and how this this came to be. Now, of course, this choice has absolutely nothing to do with my personal preference. It is an objective and completely dispassionate selection, as is always the case with my criticism. But Children's Corner, well, when I was a kid learning to play the piano, I had friends who were much better than I who could play Children's Corner, and I heard it and fell in love. And I said, I am going to play that. I am going to play that if it kills me. I am going to play it if it drives my family insane, which it just about did, actually. Uh, first of all, uh, it begins with, you know, Dr. Gradus ad Parnassum, you know, like that, right? I loved it because your left hand is just going, and it doesn't do very much in this first piece. It's all up here. Um, you know, eventually you're doing things like this, you know, at the end. But that's okay. I learned to play that. I said to my piano teacher, look, this is what I want to do. Whatever else you teach me, this is what we're going to work on. And I worked on it. I worked on it for like a year. I don't know. And and I, I played it. I played, well, I played all of it except the snowflakes are dancing. Because the snowflakes are dancing, has the melody in the middle of this chugga 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 you know, I would just sit there banging at the piano going, it's actually not that. That's how it sounds. But you actually have to distribute the, the, the touch between your, your hands rather carefully because the melody is Bum, 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 bum. So you hear da dum ba dum bum ba dum ba dum because the those accessory notes da dum mm, da dum dum are are part of the accompaniment chords and so there's balance issues there's artistry involved in playing that and I was so proud of myself that I was sort of getting myself around the artistry part and then I heard this and I quit playing the piano then and there because I just went, oh my God. And it right away told me what was so amazing about Michelangelo because Michelangelo has a reputation for being as an interpreter absolutely as cold as ice. I mean, you know, there's not a shred of human feeling in anything he did. I mean, that's not true, but, but you get that impression. The reason you get that impression is because his, his level of technical perf perfection was so profound, was so complete, that the control was so absolute that you couldn't believe that there was like a human being buried under all of that perfection somewhere. And listening to him do the children's corner, I mean, my God, he makes the piano sound like an electronic instrument. I mean, you just, you don't get any sense that there's a person pressing keys down. It's, I mean, all of his, frankly, you know, studio recordings, I mean, there aren't many, but most of his studio recordings are like that. I mean, the concerto recordings he made, the famous Ravel G major, and then those Beethoven things he did with Giolini are a bit more bizarre because you have an orchestra and a conductor and there he is doing the Michelangeli thing there with Beethoven of all people. 
and either you find it totally alienating or completely fascinating. I mean, the Ravel is a different case because Ravel is as much of a perfectionist and precision composer as Michelangelo was a performer, and so they were made for each other. There's no question about that. Also, the Rachmaninoff Fourth Concerto, the one that nobody likes, but he <laughs> he did, and he plays it unbelievably. So yeah, I, you know his output is absolutely unique. There's not very much of it. There's lots of live stuff and you know pirated stuff and whatnot, but his authorized recordings are quite small. Um, he was a teacher of, among other people, Ivan Moravets, which you can hear. I mean, Moravets is playing too, which has a similar, you know, care for timbre and touch and sound with a little bit more, you know, human warmth attached to it. But Debussy's music is, it's pictorial. It's not, it's not romantic in the sense that you want to hear, you know, billowing gouts of personalized passion. That's not what you get in Debussy. You have these wonderful sketches. And of course, the images are, I mean, they are pictorial little pianistic tone poems. Even the abstract ones, like Move Em All, the last of the first set, it, it's, it's extraordinary just listening to his feeling for touch and sound and sonority and, and, and goldfish, Poisson d'Or and Et la Lune des Sens, Le Temple qui fou. I mean, what the hell is that going to sound like anyway? It's all amazing. Just amazing. I mean, his two books of preludes are also fabulous. His Debussy was sui generis. It was another level in Debussy pianism at the time that it was released. Since then, of course, there's been tons and tons of great Debussy piano playing. It was about as different from Walter Gieseking as you could be, still have the same composer at work. Uh, it's, just, it's just an amazing disc. It really is. And if I had to go to the evil god Kangrazans and say, listen to this, he would say to me, Oh, wow, I got to hear everything else this guy did because it's like nobody else. And that's the point, isn't it? It's extraordinary stuff. So if I had to choose one recording by Michelangelo, it would be this one. And not because it was the recording which quite wisely told me that I would never be a pianist. So, you know, and you probably would be, uh, are the beneficiaries of the fact that I never became a pianist least hopefully. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.